Hi, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. For those of you who aren't familiar with Media IQ, we've spent the last six years developing analytics technology that extracts the insight to drive business growth for advertisers. And over the course of our partnership with AppNexus, we have really been focused on innovation, running thousands of innovative, programmatic advertising campaigns, and also driving this uh, forward. So I would always say that our industry is never standing still, but rather, we're always trying to think about what's next. So today, I'm going to focus on data science. And specifically, I'm hoping to make it real for you guys and talk about how these brands behind me are actually leveraging data science to solve some of their toughest problems. And hopefully, what I'll leave you with is a concept of the evolution that's happening in intelligent analytics. So I'm going to explore three areas across three case studies. Area one is that we're seeing a shift from the traditional demographic approach to segmentation to a more predictive approach based on multi-layered behaviors and historic purchase data. Second, we're seeing people move beyond just simple conversion counting using pixel loads to, first of all, extracting a much richer data set from that pixel and also connecting that to offline data in order to better understand return on investment. And then finally, we're seeing insight being applied not just to bidding, but also to creative and moment-based decisions. So when I'm talking about moment marketing, it's that flashpoint, the point that creates a mass change in behavior. So for example, uh, when England smashed five goals past Russia this Saturday, potentially, there'll be one smart marketer who creates a digital sponsorship of that moment. And as a result, they gain maximum cut through with their message. So it's no surprise with multiple elections, some big ticket sporting events, that two thirds of marketers say they're increasing moment spend in 2016. And it's a reflection of the fact that programmatic isn't just about bid optimization, about efficiency anymore. It's also about driving relevance and impact. So why is data science the answer to some of these challenges? Well, first, I'll just spend a second describing what it actually is a data scientist does. So the simplest explanation is that they are a hybrid between a programmer and a statistician. So on the programming side, they can handle the three Vs of big data. So that's volume. They can move and manipulate vast data sets. And they can distribute calculations across networks of computers. It's velocity. So they can cope with rapid streams or fire hoses of data. And it's variety. So not just crunching numerical data, making sense of text, handling structured and unstructured data. So that's the programming side. But then you've also got advanced statistical capabilities. And that's to do things such as classification and clustering, the items that we just mentioned previously. When you put those together, their job, like, say, a data analyst, is to extract insight from data. With that unique skill set, they can actually 10x that insight mining process. So on some case studies. Case study one is about segmentation by numbers. And a home furnishings client who came to us about four months ago and said, I just want my marketing to be more personalized, a simple request. And before they could do that, they had a problem. And that was that their current demographic approach to segmentation wasn't enabling them to action those segments to create a more personalized approach. Let me drill into this. Their goals were to increase lifetime value of their customers, to increase on-site conversion rates, to increase average basket values. But unfortunately, their demographic segments didn't display any consistent or uh, significant trends, really, across those goals. And furthermore, all that data was stored in different places. There's no single view of the consumer. Enter the data scientist. And their job was first a volume challenge, to take all of the data stored in their ad server, in their CRM, and gathered daily through on-site pixels, and to connect that together at its most granular point on the user level. 
And what this involves is actually extracting hundreds of millions of rows of data and then joining it all up against each user. The problem, though, is that that solution, creating a connected data set, made a new problem. And that was that now this data is too big. Because even if you could fit it into an Excel, which you can't, you wouldn't be able to make any sense of it. So the next challenge is to make big data small again. And this is how we can use clustering. Uh, and in this instance, the data scientist is just using this to identify, first of all, how many customer groups there should be, and then second of all, what the sort of signature behaviors of each group are. You might be surprised, surprised to see what the results look like, because to say a machine has done this, they're remarkably human and relatable. But that's the job of the data scientist, to make this insightful. And as a result, this advertiser now is adopting a completely new way of looking at their customers. They're also driving insight in real time into creative decisions with dynamic creative optimization. And then also, outside of programmatic, they're able to leverage this insight in future for on-site personalization. So that's changed the way they think. I'm going to dive into a second example. And this is now about how to find better prospects. Prospects that, through the connection of online and offline data, have got a better chance of delivering return on investment for a car hire client of ours. And this is a slightly different challenge, because what they were currently doing looked like this, serving online ads, driving to an online reservation, but then using that as the sole source of optimization data. The problem is that loads of people who make online reservations never actually turn up, collect a car, and become a paying customer. So let's do a quick show of hands here. Who has ever booked something online that they've never then gone on to fulfill? I know that I'm certainly amongst those people. Who um, reserved a ticket for AppNexus Optimize yesterday and didn't show up? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Nigel. Joking aside, this costs businesses money. And the solution is to start to connect that online reservation to genuine offline sales. To do that, again, it's a volume challenge to begin with for the data scientist. They accept a feed from the client. They connect that to a unique identifier, capture the, the point of the online reservation, and then they connect that to all of the ad-serving data that covers their, di their digital media. In doing this, we now have, again, a connected data set, but a true data set that we can do proper optimization with. The next question is, now that I've got tons of historic data about purchases, how do I find my next paying customers? And this is now a classification challenge for the data scientist. And they're asking this question. Given a new user and a set of features we know about them, the websites they visit, the audience behaviors they display, potentially the postcode they live in, what is the probability that they will become a paying customer for our client? This is often known as lookalike modeling. Through doing this, we can create an audience of millions of customers that are statistically the most likely to drive return on investment for this client. What's changed for them? Well, first of all, obviously, performance is improving month on month. But secondly, they've got a much more robust platform now on which to build their marketing strategy, no longer hoping that what we're doing is actually delivering revenue. They can know that. They can make bigger bets as a result. So there's probably only so much data science we can all consume in one session. So I'll finish with just one last example. And this is about using hyperlocal GPS data to link a brand to a specific time and place. In this instance, it was a chewing gum brand. And they came to us in the understanding that they knew that impulse purchases were incredibly important for their sales. So to capitalize on that, they wanted to identify a moment. It's that moment of regret just after you've polished off, let's say, a, a double burger with blue cheese and a side of onion rings. And then you realize that you're going to have to talk to other people that day, and they're going to be within a one meter radius of your breath. So they wanted to capture that moment and then send people a really, really relevant message saying, freshen your breath with our brand. This is something that, to our sales guys, seems really easy. Well, John, just target the people that have been to burger shops. 
It's not that simple. In fact, it's incredibly complex. Because what we're doing here is we're saying, of all the users we've ever seen, how many have just been to within a radius of around 500 places? And that involves joining against a data set of billions of location data points. So again, let's pull in the data scientist, see what they can do. They're going to find lots and lots of different optimizations in order to improve how we can do things. Now, we calculated that if you just to run this without a data scientist on one computer, that query would take 22 days. That's not moment marketing. Um, but when we bring the data scientist on board, they can use optimizations and then distribute that query, and they can get it done in less than a minute. The result for the advertiser is that they are the first brand to reach a consumer once they've just had that stinky burger or a slice of garlic bread. Um, and there's no surprise that relevance like this drives results. In addition, our sales guys can continue to believe that this is a simple thing to do. But probably more importantly, this can be simple and scalable for multiple clients to leverage this kind of relevance. Great. So there's my three examples. Hopefully, that's made data science a bit more tangible for you all about how this can heavily impact what marketers are doing. Because today, we've been through the whole marketing funnel, really, from the bottom, about how we can connect the data we already have about our prospects and our customers and make more money from them. We've covered, in that middle section of the funnel, how we can find better quality prospects to deliver ROI at the lower stages. And we've also covered right at the top of the marketing funnel, potentially when we're first communicating with a customer. How can we maximize relevance and gain cut through with communication that stands out? I think what's really exciting for me is that as AppNexus opens up more opportunities to program their platform, we're being given more opportunities to unleash data science and solve these marketing challenges. The final definition of a data scientist is that they are problem solvers. And if you aren't already thinking about how data science can solve some of your toughest marketing challenges, I would really encourage you to join that cohort of very smart marketers who are doing so. Thanks very much. Thank you.